Welcome back. Hope everybody is enjoying the vinyl plank flooring flood Airbnb video. I want to answer a few questions right off the bat. A couple of you got a good joke out of the under underlayment and vapor barrier comments. As I stated in the first video, vinyl plank flooring, at least most of vinyl plank flooring, does not require a vapor barrier or any sort of underlayment. What you might be confusing it with is the laminate hardwood flooring where there's like a thin layer of particle board and then there is real wood laminated on top of it. That wood is going to absorb moisture from the concrete, from the dirt, from the soil, up through the slab and into that, that uh, laminate flooring. But since this is 100% vinyl and cork, it doesn't absorb anything. It's like plastic. Uh, what's another question? Oh, another question. There was actually like two inches of standing water in this basement. A, a washing machine flooded somehow. I didn't get the exact details. Hopefully this video shows you how easy it is to put the flooring in backwards. There's a, not really much to say about it. You just got to go the opposite way and you can see easily how it just curves underneath and goes down and you tap it right back in. Oh yeah, some questions about the timeline. It was pretty short. I got the call on a Friday evening. I went Saturday morning. Uh, I looked at the place. They showed me the baseboard that they needed to match. I went and found the baseboard. I texted them a price Saturday afternoon. And they said, when can you start? And I said, well, I can start Monday morning. And they said, okay. And people are checking in Friday at noon. You have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and if I, if possible, I'll maybe a little cleanup Friday. So I had four days and I took three. The first day was all flooring. Uh, I got all the way down the hall, down, well, you'll see the video. You know exactly where I got. Uh, the second day, I, I briefly start talking about it in the video. I did the paint on the baseboard and finished out the flooring 100%. Delivered, I did deliver the baseboard that evening after it was fully dried. And then I put the baseboard all, uh, in on the third day and got paid on the first day in full. What do you think of that? The only material that I supplied was the baseboard. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how many lineal feet it was, but you can see what it is. The total basement square footage was somewhere between 875 and 900 and they oh well, you'll have to see if I got if I had enough flooring. Part 3 of this project is mostly all about baseboard and putting it in in this funky basement. The the most time consuming part of this entire project was that far back room where the bottom of the walls didn't exist. They I don't know they they, they just disintegrated and fell uh, I don't know where it was, but it, I had to glue the baseboard to the walls. And that, the baseboard and the paint and how the, the Finish Max Super, <laughs> gotta keep and come up with too many models, the finish, how the Finish Max Super uh, painted the baseboard and what it looked like and how I mixed it is in the next video. So please give this video a like if you're still around at the very end of this thing. And I uh, will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Now since I can't have this end raised, I'll have to kind of drive it in again by tapping on the back of it. This one's even a little bit more difficult. You see that gap right there. We're going to start at this end down here and work our way in. Something else that I wanted to point out that is still pretty rare, how square this basement is. If you look at here, I've got the same amount showing on this side as I do this side. 
and that is just really rare um, to be able to do that uh, that you're going to have a fl any flooring be that precise and that perfect when you started way down at the other end of the room it made your way all the way through here around cabinets and are working your way into the other room now at this stage I've come through the doorway I've got to wrap around this get back up to that wall and then I can start fully making my way across the room and down into the next room I'm going to show you how I do this not bad so what this does here is just make sure that everything is going to be running parallel to this wall and now I will just use my pen to mark out the depth of cut to notch out around this corner thought this was an interesting cut. I uh, just winged it and eyeballed it with uh, drawing it out. Um, baseboard does start right here and we'll cover it. It's going to be a carved out baseboard to get around this, this bent wall. But I'm tapping it in and we'll see how close I got on the, my first try here. Okay, here's a unique situation. Um, piecing this puzzle together, and it really isn't that difficult, but I thought I'd show you how I get this piece in here. Just gonna tap it in. I got this side flexed out and seated, this side seated. There's quite a bit of friction on here. Um, so, I'm gonna drive this sucker in. Look at that. All right, now I gotta finish the rest of this mess out. Real interesting. This is an actual addition to the house. See how thick this wall is here? And they made an additional uh, basement area below grade. They just skim coated the um, the foundation walls and sprayed texture on it. I don't know what the heck's going on under there. <laughs> it looks kind of like a mess. I know this is a new slab in here and it's supposed to be a slab on grade. I don't see any isolation joints or anything. I, I mean, there's control joints all over. Oh, I am wearing out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stick it out as long as I wanted to. So where am I? I'm in this other bedroom up here. Um, all Everything's done back that way. This bedroom, that closet, and a little bit here in the living room. This is, I've done flooring before and I, I usually don't take on more than four or 500 square feet because it, it hurts. <laughs> um, it's very physically demanding on your body. Um, it's not like things are heavy, it's just the on your hands and knees getting up and down, up and down, making the cuts out and in. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's very repetitive. There's no problem solving. There's just a lot, a lot, a lot of flooring. Yes, it's just not that fun. And if, you, if you're going to do this, better make sure you charge enough to make it worth your time. I am so glad 
I asked for as much as I did on this floor. It is kicking my butt, my knees, and my, my hands. M messing with this thing. These flooring bits here, you use your fingertips a lot. And you can't wear gloves because you need the dexterity of your fingertips to, uh, to get them in the, manipulate them into the, wherever they need to go. When you're putting these things in backwards, um, it, this little junction here, this corner, can give you some trouble. So what I do, take my knife and an eighth inch, maybe a little heavy eighth, I just pop that off, throw it over there, and then it goes in much easier. Well, it's getting a little late. It's time for me to stop making noise. Got a few custom cuts around the sump pump and over there. And then, I don't know, I may run out. There's only four boxes left and then some scraps to do this section here. I got a feeling it's going to take one, two, three, four, six or seven total boxes. I'll take you all out back here. So tomorrow, I can't even talk straight. So tomorrow, I will start the day off by going to get all the baseboard, taking it back to the workshop and painting it, spray painting it with the Finish Max Extra. No, Finish Max Super. I, ha I'll, uh, I haven't cleaned it since the last time I used it, so that'll be fun. Spray and all that so that it's drying all day long. I will come here once it's done painted, finish this section, camera's still running. Finish that section and then clean everything. Clean all the boxes up, all my scraps up. I want the paint to be as cured and dry as possible while I transport it. So I may, well, you'll have to stay tuned to find out <laughs> what I do.